Hi everyone. In the following two videos, we will be programming our operation number three. Let's look quickly here. We will be turning the diameter 10, the diameter 8, and the back chamfer. And we can see here from our two line, it's going to involve a back turner and a drill diameter 5. So let's do it. I quickly look at the initial speeds. For S13, I have 2000 RPM, the default value. I leave it as is for the moment. Then I check my tool geometry, T1301. It's a front turning tool. I want to change it to a back turning tool. So I come back here. I choose the first line, which allows me to create a new tool. And here I type my tool geometry, 13010. I check the level, it's turning outside, and here I want a turning tool rear. Okay, I want to change it, yes. And now I put my standard geometry in X, and then the same in Z. Let's say I will put a radius of 0.1, and then the quadrant, obviously, quadrant 4. Okay, done. Now I can look at my approach, the rapid traverse. I am at Z13, X13 equal variable 3169, which is bar diameter plus one millimeter. That's fine. I leave it like that. Now let's look into our turning operation itself. I double click to open and I want to type uh, the proper operation name, which is finish, let's say, diameter 10 millimeter, rough, and finish diameter 8 millimeters. Then I choose an icon that is related to what I'm doing, a back turning here, okay. And as before, I have already typed the ISO code just to make it faster. So you can pause the video to have the time to copy all the ISO code. And then we will go through that together. So now I validate this and I want to check my tool pass if what I've programmed in ISO code is correct. So Let's do it. I generate. And here I can see I don't have any alarm, so I double click in there and I go to the view outline. And here I can see my tool pass. It looks correct. So now let's comment together every operation according to the tool pass is doing. So if I look here, the first line, I have a G92S. 7000. So since I am using here the G96, which is the constant cutting speed, I have to limit the RPM, maximum RPM that I want to use in this given operation. So in this case, I chose it to be 7000 RPM. You may want to um, limit higher or lower your maximum speed uh, according on different type of uh, parameters. Let's say the diameter of your bars, if they are straight, et cetera, et cetera. So here we chose it at 7,000 RPM, and then I activate my constant cutting speed, G96, at S250, which are meters per minute, okay? Then let's go on to the next operation. I move to Z minus 17.2 and then I go down to with a work feed of 0 0.06. I go down to 9 millimeter and I will be roughing the back part of my part. I go down to Z minus 22, go back up in rapid and I come back in front of my diameter 10 and I take the radius compensation on the right side of my profile with the G42 function, and then I turn 
my diameter 10 down to Z minus 17 with a feed of F0.06. And here I put the automatic corner function G27 with the L minus 0.5. The L represents the width of your chamfer. With a minus, it's going to take it on the coordinates. If you don't put the minus, it's going to be the length of the right, uh, sorry, of the chamfer segment itself. It's all completely explained into the programming book. If you want to take the time later on to look it on your own. And then the E 0.03, it's a specific feed you want to apply only for the duration of this segment. Then it's going to go back to whatever you had programmed before. In this case, F 0.15. Okay, next code, I go down to my diameter 8 and then down to my minus 20.5 and then I do my back chamfer. I move clear from the part diameter by cancelling my radius compensation with G40 and then I move back in front. And here I cancel my constant cutting speed with G97. So I can put a S in front uh, after my G97 function if I want. So that means whatever the speed was is going to go to the speed I would indicate here. If I don't indicate any speed, it's going to stay at the last speed it calculated. So we can see here on this graphic, the speed is moving according to my diameter. So the smaller the diameter, the higher the speed and so forth because it's readapt automatically according to the diameter I'm turning, it's going to change my speed. So now let's validate our ISO code since it looks good. And in the next video, we will program the drilling operation, but also we will see how to optimize the tool change and the speed change. I can do it all one after the other, speed change, tool change, but then even though speed change takes probably 0.2 seconds, when you are working or trying to work at high production rates, 0.2 seconds uh, means a lot. So we can do the spindle changing in the same time as we do the tool change. And this is what we will see together with the drilling operation in our next video.